wonderful God. Hallelujah. He deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Apostle, thank you for this privilege to be on your platform. And Mama, thank you as well. Good to see you again. Good to be back here. And thank you all the leaders and elders and everyone that is here this morning. You want to celebrate yourself with a clap offering. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here this morning because I believe that there is something the Lord put in my spirit to share with you today. And I'm going to do that as the Lord leads me. Amen. Now, before we do that, we'll just take a minute and just worship the Lord. I know uh, Apostle gave me 30 minutes. When, is it 35 minutes? 35 into 40. Okay, I'll times that by three. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, just lift your hands and let's just thank God. Father, we honor you. We bless you for your presence and your power in this place. Thank you for what you are set to do. We honor your name in Jesus' name. I pray that no one go back the way they came. I pray that you will impact your people greatly through your word. I pray that there will be transformation, impartation in the name of Jesus. And above all, that you will receive all the glory and all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. And let the people of God shout, Amen. Amen. Come on, shout, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your seat. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter number 15, verse number 29. Romans 15, 29. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Romans 15, 29. Um, Praise God, I'm just trying to get my system to work. Do you, have, do, you have, do you project it? Okay, it's up. All right, okay. It says, and I am sure, I think I'll just keep this so that you just keep projecting for me. Praise God, it will be easier. It says, I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul was speaking to the Roman church, promising them a visit. And he said, when I am coming, I am confident of one thing, and I'm coming with the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. What he was telling them is that there is a blessing in the gospel. And he says, as I'm coming to you, I am bringing that blessing. I am bringing not just part of it. I am bringing the fullness of the blessing. By the grace of God, I believe that the fullness of the blessing is here this morning. And in the name of Jesus, that blessing is resting upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Now, what I want you to see in this scripture is that Paul used the word blessing, not blessings. I'm sure you've had teachings because uh, Apostle came to us last month. He blessed us so much. The whole church was on fire. They love you. They love you. They love you. <laughs> Praise God was a great time. Hallelujah. You know, if you look at what uh, 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 Paul used there, he used the word the blessing. He didn't say blessings. Many people are looking for blessings. But Paul said, I am coming with the blessing. Now, when you use the word the blessing, it means that it's one. It's definitely it's just one thing he's talking about, not plenty things. Now, he's not talking about blessing of house, of car, of uh, marriage, of children. Of, uh, that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the mother of blessings. He's saying that I am coming with the blessing. So when you get this blessing, every other thing begins to happen. Am I making sense? So he says, as I'm coming to you, I am coming to give you the blessing. I'm not coming to give you blessings, but the blessing. Because when you get the blessing, your life becomes a blessing. So everything about your life becomes a blessing. And Paul says that this is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now Proverbs will say that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow 
with it. Now again, it didn't say the blessings. There is something called blessings. If you buy a car, now it's a blessing. You get married, it's a blessing. You have a baby, it's a blessing. You get a new job, it's a blessing. You get uh, money in your bank account, supernatural. It's a blessing. All those things are blessings. However, that is not the blessing. Uh, you can get all those things, and anybody in the world can get those things. But the blessing is one. Let me give you a quick example so you understand. You know when uh, Esau, uh, uh, Isaac was going to, he thought he was going to pass, and he said he wanted to bless his son, Esau and Jacob. You know that story? The Bible says that when he came, he blessed Esau instead of Jacob. Okay? And Esau came back. No, no, no. He blessed Jacob instead of Esau. So when Esau came back, he was asking, Father, bless me. Is there no blessing anymore that you can give to me? Is there no blessing to me? Now, how many of you know that when Jacob left home, everything the father had became Esau's? So Esau was the one that took all the sheep, all the things, everything that belonged. But Jacob took the blessing. Am I making sense? That's why when people struggle for their father's properties because they don't understand the difference between blessings and the blessing. The blessing is not physical, but it is what makes you to begin to have blessings. Am I making sense? So, Paul says, as I am coming, I am coming with the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, when you get that, the fullness of it, you don't need to worry. Now, for you to understand what Paul is talking about, it's good for you to understand this blessing. Now, this blessing he's talking about was the one that God started. Let me, let me run through this very quickly for you. Now, when God made man, the Bible tells us that he blessed them. Okay? That blessing, it is pronounced, the proclaimed, the declared blessing. Are you following me? God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. So in other words, in man, God did something and blessing is always proclaimed. Somebody, if I say, I bless you, then it has to be with what? And the words that come after the blessing is what is in the blessing I give you. If I say, hey, I bless you today. Yes, it's good. I bless you. That's already a positive thing. But what came out? What did you say when you blessed me? Are you following me? And every time when you see scripture, when God, your prophet is about to bless, they say something. So when God blessed man, God said to him, uh, uh, Genesis chapter number 1, verse 28, I believe. He says, if you can project it, he says, and God blessed them. That's male and female. And God said, you see that? And God blessed them. And God said unto them. So the said is what is in the blessing. Are you following me? You are still understanding it. So the Bible says, he now said to them, be fruitful. So you know what he's saying? He's saying to them, you will be fertile. Fruitful means to be fertile, to be productive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it means it is not only in biology or biologically. It's in biologically, you can be fertile in your body. You have children when their time is right. But also you are fertile in everything you do. That is inside the blessing. Are you following me? The blessing. What is inside? That's what I'm telling you. Okay? Then he says, multiply. So what God is saying, in the blessing, there's something called multiplication. So when the blessing starts working in your life, you begin to multiply. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it simply means that if I started a business, the only thing that can happen with the blessing is that I multiply. Then he says, put it, put it again, replenish the earth. Now, the word replenish means to fill again. It's like the simple way I put it, like you have a bag of rice at home. You use it to a particular time. It's going to finish and you buy another one. So you are replenishing. So God said to them, Adam, if you replenish the earth, in other words, you are going to fill the earth again. That simply means that anything you are doing that seems to be going down, you can put it back again. Because it is in the blessing. 
If you carry the blessing, it doesn't matter. They may tell you your kidney is not functioning. You replenish. They tell you that one organ is not working well. You replenish. They tell you that the business is going down. You replenish. It's in the blessing. And in the name of Jesus, somebody you are replenishing now. Then he says subdue. The word subdue means to conquer, to push under, to press under. Because God understands that they will have a position. And in life, you always have a position. But God says there is something in the blessing. When it's in you, you just subdue. They come against you, you subdue. You see, it was in the book of Esther that Mordecai and Haman, and Haman when they had their confrontation, Haman, who was the, opposed, uh, the, the enemy of Mordecai, the wife and his friends advised him, say, hey, if this man be the seed of the Jew, that you are already fallen, know that your end has come. Because they understand that they carry, those people carry a blessing that they subdue. I prophesy to you, every opposition, you will subdue it. Whatever comes against you, you will subdue it. Whatever stands against you, you will subdue it. In the name of Jesus. Then he says, have dominion. Have dominion. To have dominion means to rule. Everywhere you find yourself, you rule. You take charge. You rule. In your land, in your city, in your community, your family, you rule. That is in the blessing. Now, one of the ironies of the things that happen today is that a lot of people don't understand the power of the blessing or they disregard the blessing. They disregard the blessing. And sometimes people even speak in such a way that it almost makes you look that the blessing is worse. And sometimes some things that is said, even from the pulpit, I, I feel a bit... Because it's almost like you disregard the blessing that says, I'm in you to dominate. One of the examples I always use is this idea of... This is a digression. Man of God will correct me if I say something wrong. This is Apostle over this house, so we correct it after I've gone. Praise God. But I know I'm not saying anything wrong. You know? You know, this mindset of, you know, uh, every witch that is following me, they will die, so I will succeed. Let them die, so I will succeed. Let them die. Now, there is a place for judgment in the scripture. I believe that. I believe God kills people for our sake. The Bible says it's a righteous thing for God to recompense vengeance to them that trouble us. So God does that. But the part I don't like is when you begin to act like until they die, you cannot prosper. You disregard the blessing because the Bible tells us, the Lord said to my Lord, rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. In other words, in the midst of the enemy, you keep prospering. We are not waiting for them to die. We keep prospering. In the presence of the enemy. That's why I have a problem with it. Not like God don't judge people, but when you begin to act that way, all you are saying is that you have given your power to them down till they die. And guess what? They are not dying the next day. So you keep waiting. You pray, you fast for them to die. And God is saying you are waiting for them to die. I say prosper. You okay, wait now. Wait. And because you don't understand that you are fighting principalities and powers and not a human being. Even when they die, the same devil that is fighting you enter another person. How many will you kill before you succeed? Now, I know what I'm saying. It's God judges people. I'm not taking it lightly. God does kill people for our sake. He killed Herod. He does. But we do not wait for them to die. They have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. In the presence of my enemy. In the presence of my enemy. In the presence of my enemy. Who said you will not succeed? I came to announce to you, regardless of the enemy, the opposition, the witchcraft, the manipulation, you will prosper. You will succeed. You will make it. In the name of Jesus. Please take your seat. You know, when I speak like this, I'm going to say, because you're a pastor, you don't have a You see, before I even went to England, you know, 
my visa was not, the, the embassy was delaying all that. So I wrote to them. I was going by back in September. They said I come for interview in December. So I sent them an email. I said, why is that? They said, eventually, after two emails or two letters, they eventually said, okay, uh, they will do it. I should come on the 4th of October. 4th of October is already late. But I said, okay. Left Lagos that day. Went back to worry. I was living in worry there. And I just said, okay, before I go to my house, let me greet my mom. And I went to greet her before I go home. And she said to me, I told her, I said, they delayed my son. And she said to me, said, my prophet said, they've carried your documents to the Coburn. So you cannot travel. Yeah. You know those holy anger. I know. I know. Who did I send you a message? That was my response. Did I send you a message? Did I send? And the good thing was that I was coming from Lagos with all the documents in my hand. So I said, these are my documents. They are here. Nobody can carry them. Now, it's not like <laughs> but, You know, sometimes the world makes you angry. Yeah. And that same night, I went home. And when I got to my house, I was just looking at the brochure of the school. Then I saw late registration. And they said, by concession, they can give you to the 16th of October if you have a valid. The same night. The next morning, I rushed, emailed the school. That email was still, you have to go to business center. Rushed to be there, emailed the school, said to them, this is what is happening. My interview is on Friday, the 4th. If you give me, if you are willing to take me, I'll be down the 7th. And they replied, they said, it's okay. I said, send an email, not just to. So they sent me the email. I went on the fourth for interview. Embassy said, oh, it's too late. I said, no, it's not late. They will still take me. They said, you have anything? I said, yeah, look at the email. They saw the email. And they went, to, okay, okay, okay. We don't want to delay you since they say you should come by 7th. Bam! They came to me. On the 7th, I moved. <laughs> In the presence of thy enemies. I was going to get married now. My wife was in Nigeria. I was there. And all of them here, they began to see vision. Ah, we had a dream. You came, you couldn't go back. Please, let's send her to you. You don't need to come. So I said to her, I said, are you the people getting married? I said, I'm the one getting married. I will come. When I come, I will marry. When I finish marrying, I will go. And my wife will follow me. So I came. And I got married. And when I got married... Two months later, my wife got her visa. She too, she moved. We got married in February, last day, 28th. By May, she was in the UK. In fact, her sister said, if they give my sister visa, I will believe you are a man of God. I laugh. I say, forget that thing. Because there's no experience of people who got married at two years, five years. The person cannot leave. And this time I'm talking to you, I was on the student visa. And to shock you, that student visa had six months left. It was running out in October. I got married in February. She went for interview in March. Got the visa in March. Came in May. In six months visa. When that visa was in the present, you prosper. I came to prophesy to you. No opposition. No power of hell. No devil of darkness will be able to stop you anymore. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Stop giving too much credence to the devil. Instead, give the glory to God. He says you will prosper. People worry too much about the devil. And you, in fact, many people talk too much about the devil less than God. Devil, devil, devil. devil. Are you a child of the devil? You don't know anything about you don't know anything about Jesus. But all you know about devil, devil, devil. The devil can do this. Oh, the devil can do that. Oh, devil. Can. You don't know. You know, a lady came to our church. We did the. Uh, you know, normally when we have you no know, reception, festival anniversary, you know, there's food. She will not eat. Oh. So I got to. You know. He said, ah. When she when she was coming, when she was in Nigeria, church said, that one day the pastor said. The food that they were going to serve, somebody has poisoned all of them with witchcraft. Nobody should eat. So for that day, nobody, they don't eat in the house of God. 
So she carries that mentality that when you go into the house of God, they can poison the food you are eating. In the house of God. Abba. Then what happens to communion then? Then we don't take communion anymore because they can poison it. People exalt the devil so much when Jesus said, I see Satan fall down like like lightning. He is dead. Stop lifting him up. People read, Satan is not powerful. Forget all this. The devil is powerful. You believe it. That is, that's why he's powerful in your life. You believe he's powerful. That's why he's powerful. I don't believe he's powerful. So he's not powerful in my life. He's not powerful in my life because I don't believe he's powerful. What happens with our faith is that what you believe is what happens. Even when you believe a lie, it works. It's a lie, but you believe it. It works. If I say now, nah, hey, apostle, as I was coming, they just hit your car. Okay. And all of a sudden, your atmosphere will change. And you're like, hey, which devil be this thing? My God. You are not thinking. Your mind is already thinking what to do. But then I said, oh, sorry, it was not your car. Look, I thought it was your car. Did it not affect you the time I said it? It affected you. So when you believe a lie, it works in your life. And that's why Jesus said, you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. So when you know the truth, you are not panicking. You know, during COVID thing, I told them in church, I said, Jesus is not coming. Everybody, hey, Jesus is coming. I said, he's not coming. Me, I know, he's not coming. How do you know? What? He's not coming. Because he said he will come as a thief in the night, not when all of you are ready. He said they will be eating, like dancing and marrying and giving in marriage, like the time of Noah. So how do you tell me, the pandemic, the lock you have told me, how can it come when marriage is banned, everything is bad? It's opposite to scripture. Why? Because I know. So if you don't know the truth, you think, hey, Jesus is coming, oh. Jesus is coming, oh. Jesus is coming, oh. But those of us who have read our Bible, and we know what the words say, we are living and say, glory to God. We know Jesus is not coming. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah! So he says he will dominate you. So let me quickly... I don't know how much time I have left. I must you didn't show me the time. But, but, you see, so this is what that happened. God put that blessing in Adam with five components inside the blessing. That number one, you must be fertile. Anything to you, anything I do must prosper. It must be. It must prosper. It must. Then he says, you will multiply. You multiply. You multiply. You increase it. By the grace of God. I started doing property business by prophetic. I said, oh, God will give you property. Yeah, God was church. Oh. Then God started giving me blessing that one. Then he began to multiply them. He began to multiply. Then he says, you will what? Replenish. Replenish. Every time it seems like he's drying, you prophesy, God's back. Are you going to say? Then he says, subdue our faith opposition. Even in the property system, opposition. We subdue. We keep subdue. This year, one engagement, one, 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 one uh, property which I was trying to get. Typical. He looks up demonic. Never had that kind of experience before. Shop demonic. Well, Lord, what is it? I was on my bed just meditating. Lord, what is it? And the Spirit of God spoke to me. God, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. He says, by day I ran through a troop. By my God, I leaped over a wall. Oh, I knew victory has come. Subdue. I got two properties in one day. Why? You subdued your position. It was a, it was a big opposition. And if, the, if I didn't stand my ground, I would lose money in thousands of pounds. But God gave me the victory. Then he says, have dominion. You must choose. It's in the blessing. It's inside. One person, I am coming with that. It's inside. So we see that what now happened was that Adam fell. When Adam fell, that blessing was no longer functioning. So when God destroyed the world through the time of Noah, after Noah came out of the ark, he came back again and declared the blessing on Noah. I said, Noah, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. He gave Noah that blessing. And the blessing continued till Noah, until Noah's first son misbehaved and the thing disappeared. Then in Genesis chapter number 12, the same blessing, 
God now called Abraham and said to Abraham, Abraham, I want to bless you. Send me. Go to a place I will show you. I will bless you and make you a blessing. In other words, you will be the symbol of a blessing. When people want to mention blessings, you they will be calling. Abraham's blessing am I? Don't we see you today? Say, Abraham, I want to bless you. you. Follow me. Then Abraham believed God and went. And the Bible says one time Abraham went to war and when he came back, he brought you know, many victories, many things, substance of war. He fought against five kings. And the Bible says a priest of God, Meshisadek, met him. And when Meshisadek met him, the Bible says Abraham came, gave the tithe of everything. Genesis 14, I can't go into it because of time, so I'm just running. So he went to uh, uh, Meshisadek, he gave Meshisadek a tithe. And the Bible says Meshisadek brought bread and wine, which is the symbol of the communion. Okay? The body and the blood. Gave it to Abraham. And when Abraham took it, the Bible says, Mechisedek not said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. He now released the blessing upon Abraham. Say, Abraham, from today, everything that God had in heaven and on earth is yours. Then after that, the Bible says, the king of Sodom that Abraham went to fight for, now said, Abraham, give me all the people, take all the properties, take all the blessings. Abraham said, nah. He says, I have lifted up my hands to the most high God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. I will not even take a shoelace because tomorrow you will say you make Abraham rich. You know what he was trying to say? There is something they just gave me called the blessing. All these ones you are seeing, take them. There is something I just received. When you understand the blessing, you will value it more than silver or gold. Because you know it will produce silver. It will produce gold. It will produce houses. It will produce companies. It will produce children. It will produce marriages. It will produce everything you need. I flew into Lagos years ago. And I have but custom stopped me. A young man. And he said to me, well, I said, it's my stuff. Everything there. He said, well, I said, I'm a pastor. Ah, pastor, you are going to bless. I said, you are blessed. Is it not that kind of blessing? I said, what do you want? I said, do you want money or the word of a prophet? I have money. I will give you. Do you want money? I gave you the word of a prophet. You are talking about money. Do you want I'll give you money. He says, I want the word of a prophet. I took myself and I walked away. Because you got to understand the difference. I'd rather you show me and bless me than give me money. What do money? Money will finish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when you get the blessing, yes, well, why did you think Jacob tricked and got it? Ran away from home. And when he ran away from home, Laban said, I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. You carry something that brings blessing that anything you touch. Some people are fighting for little things. Whether of you to say, no, I get the blessing. This thing works. You see, sometimes people think that, you, no, no, it's because of the environment. It's not the environment, it's you. It's the blessing. And the Bible says, Abraham carried it and he got to a time God now said to him, I will bless your seed. Then in the book of Exodus, God now told Moses, he says, this blessing is coming upon the land of Israel, the poor of Israel. He said, not because I've done anything. It's because I love you. Now, uh, let me, I would have been giving you scriptures, but because of time, I'm just uh, uh, running. In Deuteronomy chapter number 7, let's see 6 to 9 very quickly. Deuteronomy chapter number 7, 6 to 9. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do that quickly. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you receiving something this morning? It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. Somebody says special people. Yes, special people unto himself. In other words, you are not like your, your neighbor. You are special. You are not like everybody on the street. Even though you wear the same kind of dress, we are not the same. I am a special person. Chosen generation, royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Have you not heard that before? He says, unto you, above all people that are upon the face of the earth, say, above all people, you are the one that I've chosen. Go to the next verse, we'll stop at nine. He says, come on, let's, let's read it up to nine. He says, the next verse, verse seven. He says, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were fewest of all people. Oh, but because the Lord loved you and because he, he, had, he keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of all the house of bondage 
from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Verse 9 now. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is he, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. Glory to God. He says, God now chose you as a special people. We're telling the Israelite now. Say, we love, God loved you, not because you were special, not because you were even many. Not because you were say, but he just loved you. Somebody say, God loves me. He says he loved you, and not just that he loved you, he also made you to be special. And he says he's keeping the covenant, the one he made to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, until this day. And he says he's going to do it to a thousand generations. That is why today, go online. Anywhere where people succeed, in any nation, the number one are the Jews. Number one, the Jews, everywhere. America cannot do without Israel. As small as Israel is, surrounded by enemies, all the Muslim nations, they can't kill them. They, can't, they try, but they are the ones begging Israel for innovation. Many of the things you do in IT is from them. Most of the inventions today came from Israel. Your, and most people who are, who are celebrated, one way or the other, have an, a Jewish blood. The owner of Facebook, the owner of Dell Computers in those days, Oracle, all of them, they have an Jewish blood. The owner of Chelsea, all the, they, for my own, I saw, we saw the now. Jewish blood, the Russian Jews, all the Jews, any nation in Britain today, they are in parliament, they are in everywhere. They were the people who came from Hitler, they ran away during war, but yet they dominate where they enter. Put them in, any, in America, anywhere you put them, they dominate. Why? God says, I have chosen you people as a special people. I have given you. So everywhere you see the Jews, they, if you go to the, the high brow of every city, they own them. Go to Manhattan, they sell diamonds. They are the ones that deal with money. There is nothing that moves without them. There is nothing that moves. Why? They carry what we call the blessing. So a Jewish man will enter a place without anything. Give him a few years, he becomes number one. And they begin to jealous them. Jealous them. Jealous them. Why? Because they carry the blessing. Now, I've said all that for you to understand the blessing. But Paul says, I'm coming with it. Because the Bible now tells us what Jesus did for us when he came was to make sure that those of us who were not Jews will begin to enjoy the same blessing. So in Galatians chapter number 3, verse 13 and 14, I want you to put it back, put that up for me as I begin to run them. Galatians chapter number, have you, have you received something? Yeah. Now Galatians chapter number 3, let's read it now from verse 3. It says, Christ, remember the blessing of Christ. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is every man that hangeth upon the tree. Why? Verse 14 now. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So he says what Jesus did was to die so that that blessing that they are enjoying, this blessing, will come upon us who are not qualified. So Paul now says, as I am coming, I'm coming with the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that blessing is the blessing of Abraham. And that is what is released upon your life today. In the name of Jesus. Now let me run through the how to manifest the blessing. Because a lot of us, once we are saved, you get it. Number one, you need to be born again because it's Christ that brings it. When I say be born again, it means that you give your life to Christ. I don't mean attend church. I mean you cannot guess. You know that you are saved. You remember when you consciously surrender your life. If you have not done that consciously, saying to the Lord, Jesus, you are my Lord. I surrender my life. You may, you may be in church, maybe going to church, maybe around Christian. Your father may be a pastor. It doesn't make any difference. You have to be born again consciously. You cannot guess your salvation. You must know you have made that you no know, commitment to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord from today. I surrender everything to you. 
And you do that consciously. Once you've done that, you are born again. But if you have not done that, don't just you know, stay among, you know, like Saul among the prophets. And the prophets are, he thinks the prophet. No, the prophet is the atmosphere. There are a lot of church people who stay around church and they think they're Christians. But the atmosphere is carrying them. So when they go to a place, that atmosphere is not there. You see them running. We see them a lot in the UK. You know the one, the firebrand here? When they come, you see, you see them in church. <laughs> They say, oh, this was at the day, but again, but again. They are walking through the Sunday, they will come. Even Sunday, Sunday. Not weekday now. They are the ones that will not even meet weekday. Some were pastors. They come to a place when the environment is different. Come to church. <laughs> I was, oh, come to, I'm a minister, and so I said, so, okay, okay, but you're welcome, you're welcome. In the past, when they come, we accept all of them, put them, but we began to see that, ah, what's your, wait. <laughs> so when you come now, you wait first. We let you go through process. Then the ones that say, I'm a minister. And tie your hair. It's not the point again. But I've seen the ones that don't wear earrings. They tie their hair. Away, and you, they look it. But give them a few months. You will understand. Say, ah. <laughs> Perming your hair doesn't mean born again. Before you start looking at it. You perm your hair. It's not born again. Born again is giving your hair. Surrendering your heart. That is the beginning of the experience. When you start there, the blessing comes into your life. Then it begins to manifest because it will not all manifest one day. All these quick old good things that you people are looking for, oh, come forgive me. You know, some, some people just they don't understand that God is a God of process. They think God will just give you everything one day. So when they come to church, uh, he said I will say, I did not yeah, God is not answering me. Yeah? You don't know God has gone ahead of you. God does not think in the short space of time. You are thinking in 24 hours. You are thinking in one month. You know, you know what we do? This is my year of manifestation. God doesn't think in terms of one year. He thinks in terms of eternity. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He thinks into your future. There are things, you see, that I, I, I was sharing in Word of Life. You know, that's why I came to the world. I was sharing, I said, because they had a prayer month. I was saying to her, I said, listen, don't confuse yourself with this prayer thinking that when you pray now, you get the house, you get the baby, you get the, oh, we did wait for 30 days, we didn't get the house, I didn't get the baby. You are missing it. You are missing it. No prayer is wasted. Sometimes the prayer is not about what God wants to do for you, it's what he's doing in you. Sometimes it's working in you, there are things he's betting. Sometimes it's pushing your will to conform to his will. When Jesus was praying in the garden, Lord, if it be your will, God did not change it. God did not say, okay, don't die again. But God made his will to agree with the will of the Father. So then, when he finished prayer, he came and he said, now nah, I'm ready to go and die. Because something happened in him that was not there before he went to pray. Before he went to pray, he was saying, Lord, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Take this cup from me, Lord. Take it away. Not my will, but I will. But by the time he finished praying, he said, let's go and die. So let's go. What now happened? Did God change anything? No. He still had to go to the cross. But the prayer did something inside of him. Because God will not allow him to live. If he allow him to live, you will not be here today. I will not be here today. So when God is working in your life and you think that, oh, he didn't have something today. Because you don't know the God. God is a God of process principles and timing. When you follow him with all your heart sincerely, he will lead you by himself. He will take you one step. He, he told Joseph you are going to rule. But he didn't start from the throne. He started from Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to prison. From prison. And the Bible says in every state, and God was with Joseph. And God was with Joseph. And God was in prison. God was with Joseph. You got to understand the way the blessing works. Don't rush ahead of yourself. Oh, I pray. They, uh, look at my age. At this age now, nobody has showed up. And I'm fasting. I am faithful to God. I'm doing everything. You think God is not seeing you? You know, you said something profound when you came. Faith is what you want to get from God. Faithfulness is what God gives you. You know, I had always
place, I, I talked to one of our workers meeting when those people that Jesus went and said at the ninth hour, the eleventh hour, and gave, and gave all of them equal. And the ones that came in the morning were saying, Lord, why did you pay us for this other people? In my mind, though, I know Jesus, but in my mind, I was always saying, please, but they work for money in my mind. Are you paying me? But the Lord says, you know my money. I do what I like with money. But he showed me something. He said, those at the beginning negotiated their salary. Those at the end did not negotiate. You cannot negotiate for God your own life. God will give you what is best for you. There are things you don't even know you need. You don't even know you need. God, if you give me this. No. He will give you. But that's what you negotiated for. But what he has for you is bigger. And in fact, you don't, he has not even entered your mind. You don't even know that thing. But yet, that's what he has for you. So if you allow him and you are faithful to him, and you are doing his job. You let him be the one to decide. To say, you know what? My child, you are qualified for this. Take it. And you receive it. Other people who negotiated will say, ah, ah, but uh, we do it more than you. Now, they are negotiating. God says, what you negotiated, I paid you. I didn't cheat you. You said this, I gave you this. But this one, they didn't negotiate. For them, they are just going to do anything they like. They didn't give me. And God says, I give you what I gave them. And you say, oh, God, my God says, you negotiated. You can't negotiate your future. The things that are written concerning you, how do you know them? Do you know tomorrow? Have you seen tomorrow? How many years plan can you make? But yet, the one who sits on the throne, the eternal God, the God of all eternity, who knows you before you were born, written everything concerning you, knows what is in your future. And when you send him faithfully, he says, Behold, my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, salvation number two, believe in the efficacy of the power of the blessing. Believe that there is blessing. Don't believe always in your labor. Take a seat for a few minutes. Don't, don't believe always in your labor. Some people just believe you need to believe in labor. I believe in labor. You have to work. You don't, you don't tell I'm blessed, I'm blessed, you don't do work. Everybody that you see is that were blessed. They were hardworking. Joseph, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac. Isaac sold in the land. And they're hardworking people. So we believe in them. But we recognize that there is something above what we do called the blessing. That's what is working. You got to believe that the blessing is in your life. You got to believe. I believe it. And everything I do prospers. Everything I do prospers. God moves supernaturally when we need to. God just does it. So believe it. Then believe in the agent of the blessing. What I mean by that is that God, the way he transmits the, the blessing to his people, uses men. That's why Mejizanek was the priest who now had to declare it upon Abraham, even though Abraham, God had told him. God said to Moses, tell Aaron and let him tell his sons that this is how they will have to bless the people of Israel. When they bless them, that my name will be upon them because we're the priests. The priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. I declare that after every service. Before the people leave. Why? Because God says, when you do that, then I will put my name upon them and I will bless them. Glory be to God. So believe in the agent of the blessing. Your pastor, your uh, apostle, is the agent here of the blessing over this congregation. I came as a servant of God, as an agent of the blessing, and I believe that there is something in my life that God will release upon you today. In the name of Jesus. Connect to the blessing by your confession. Connect to the blessing. Abraham said the same thing that Meshisadek said over him. Meshisadek said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of the heaven and the earth. When Abraham met the king of Sodom, he said, I have lifted up my hands to the Most High God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Confess what is declared over you. If you lift this way and say, go and prosper, say, I'm going to prosper. When you confess it, I am prospering. Declare it. Because the Bible says, who is that way? You know, I, I preach a message, a message in, 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 
You think us how much of the pot, about the pot of oil and all that. In verse 7, I don't have time to go to that, but in verse 7, of 2 Samuel chapter number 4, the Bible says, after the, you know the story now, so I'm just talking it. You know, after the woman brought the vessel and they start to pour your pour your pour your and the Bible said there was no more vessel, and the oil oh yeah, was stopped. So I put it if you can get the scripture. It says, for second things, that's the somewhere. See, sometimes I made that example yesterday. <laughs> Second thing, chapter number four, uh, verse number seven. Praise God. I was speaking on the wedding yesterday, so I made that example that there are many unintended errors. So when you are married, don't always fight over it. Then she, uh, praise God. It's like I said something. <laughs> praise God. Now verse six, verse six, verse six, verse six. Put, put it in. Was a marriage feast that I was talking about marriage. That was it. It says, and it came to pass when the vessels were filled that she said to her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel, and the oil was stayed. I always ask this question and said, Why did the oil stop? From what we just read. Anybody want to shout out something? Yeah? There was no more vessel. It's not what the boy said. What the boy said. Not that there's no more vessel. Because the Bible says he was turning, turning, turning. The vessel was filled. So it means that he was pouring. And he said, bring another one. It didn't stop. If the boy said, I'm going to my master's place to get another one. There will be pain. But the boy now said, there's no more vessel. Oh, yes. That is why you confess it. The Bible says, 1 Peter, I believe, chapter 3, verse 10. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking God. Yes, what he's yes, saying, don't talk wrongly. Many people talk themselves out of the blessing. You are blessed, talk like you are blessed. You don't have to see it first, talk it first. You talk it, you see it. You are waiting to see it before you talk it. That's not faith. You talk it, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I will be blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I carry the blessing. I succeed. I prosper. Everything I do works. And the devil can look at your life. Say, I know my life more than you know it. I am blessed. Say, to confess it, yeah. To connect to the service by confessing it, then also understand the value of service. Service. You serve God. But now, you serve the Lord thy God and he will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of you. One of the highest keys in the kingdom for the blessing is service. Service to the Lord. That's one of the highest. A man that serves, I mean serve with your heart, not for pastor. You know what I mean by pastor? No. You are serving with your heart. You are just doing it for the Lord. God is determined to bless you, for he said, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name, that you minister unto the saints and do minister. In other words, you are still doing it. Service is what God cannot be unrighteous. He has to. The Bible says, If he does it, he is unrighteous. How can God be unrighteous? So it says, Serve, 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 evangelism. Serve. Prayer. Serve. Carrying equipment. Serve. Everything. You are serving. You are not serving pastor. You are serving Jesus. You are serving. You are praying in the night for the church. Nobody sees you, but you are on your knees. At church. In our church, we will see your prayer. We will see your prayer. Ah! Heaven is looking at you. The liftings of God begin to come. When promotion time comes, the promotion time is not every day. But when promotion time comes, the Spirit of God scans through the house. Where are those that have been faithful? Say, then he will separate between what? Those who serve God and he who that serves him not. Malachi. Remember that story? Say, we put a difference. Distinguish them. Say, These are the ones that are serving me. Service is the most powerful way. Move you to realms that you never thought imagined. You know, I didn't really think that. By the grace of God, God has blessed me. But one day I said, God doesn't bless me anymore. I'm grateful for all he has done. You know? But he 
you will not stop. But the truth is, you serve your way. Serve where there is nothing that looks like a reward. There are people who say, oh, instrumentalists. Ah, yeah. God bless you guys. You're wonderful. Good to see you all. You know, God, you are doing a great job. But can I tell you something? There is a difference between those who serve for money and those who just serve God. It doesn't mean you will not bless them. But you serve God in your life. You understand what I'm saying? You are serving God and God gives you. God gives you. Our, our Pastor Victor was our first keyboard player. God has blessed him. In our church, we don't pay instrumental. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just the truth. But I teach something that makes you understand that you don't need that money. You need something else. But we bless them when we need to bless them. You understand what I'm saying? When there's need to bless, you bless them. So that you should say you appreciate their work. But they themselves are not doing it for the blessing that you want to give to them. They are doing it because in their heart, because it's the same. The way I explain is that he's serving God by playing here today. He's serving God by playing here today. The usher is serving God by standing there. I'm serving God by preaching. Okay? So somebody served graphic there. So should we pay everybody? But what has happened is that the church corrupted the musicians. Because somebody has to pay them to say, hey, no, no, come to us, we'll give you bigger money. And some of them began to run for the highest bidder. And they missed their destiny by going for right. See, it's like I've taught something that, that I should have said. Man of, uh, you are blessed. Okay? You are blessed. You are blessed in Jesus' name. I didn't come to offend. <laughs> I just came to, but it, it, I, I'm just trying to tell you how God can lift you by Himself. I've not the liftings of God. I can tell you my testimony will not leave this place. I got to the UK. I just heard that. I went to that school fees. I didn't have it. My mother was a petty trader. My father died that year. We buried my father in July. He was, in fact, my father was in the mortuary when the idea of traveling came. Somebody said, let's go and do our master. I said, how would you get money? Do you know about the church? He said, let's just do it now. I was close to my manager. He said, ah, maybe your manager will give you where you go, you work, you pay. So I said, okay, let me use a step of faith. I went and I, you know, in those days, we go to the internet cafe, you, I feel the application for money, night, the money, you know, and you know it's slow. Not now you spend your time internet doing nothing. Feel the application and got admission. The people whose father had money, they didn't give them. Me, that didn't have money. They gave them. Then I got there. Manager called him, said, There's no money. Everybody said, No money. Every door was shut. Literally shut. Completely. I was in a strange land, a young man, I know nobody. I began to get letters. If you don't pay within seven days, I've never owed anybody in my life. And they bring later. If you don't pay within seven days, we'll take you to debt uh, recovery agency. I don't even know what they are. And I was like, God, who sent me this movement? That's why people say, England, England, confess so you, your pastor will tell you. I was like, God, who sent me debt of over 7,000 pounds? Where will I pay it? No job. Eventually, accommodation was to that. I couldn't pay. I was owing them. I was owing them. Started going around everywhere. School refused to register me. They said I must have minimum 1,005 in those days to register. I only had 1,000 for all my savings for my work here. And 60,000 naira my mom gave me. Join all of them. It became 1,000 and something. I went. I said, let me register with 1,000. They said, no, no, no. You need to have 1,005. I said, okay, I'll come back. So I started living on the 1,000. Not finished. Job, no job. Eventually, I found a job for kitchen potter. You know what kitchen potter is? Kitchen potters are those who work inside the kitchen, not outside. You wash the dishes and the pot. Okay? Every job is honorable in England. If you don't know, you better know that. You see how you people make, uh, hey, I can't do this, I can't do that. When you come there, people with masters, they know what they are doing there. Every job is honorable. <laughs> we re- well, that is clean and you respect it. I was watching the- they give me money, I will go and pay accommodation. I said, 
me have follow the if I want I went to the book of uh, my gospel. I said, if I want to stop. He said, no, 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 just continue. Go to welfare. I went to welfare. Welfare said you are not a rich staff student. We can't help you. Go to student union. Student union said the best thing for you to do is to go back home. I went, go to faculty. Faculty said we don't have anything. I went round, round, round. I was not staying in place. So one day, the head of postgraduate studies, Pat Bell, wonderful lady, she said to me, send an email, say, you've been in this school for six months. You haven't paid a dime. Meet me on Monday. This was on a Friday. Meet me on Monday. Otherwise, you'll be excluded from studies. My heart was like, ah, Jesus. So I went to look for a church I could pray. But the kind of prayer in my heart, I can't pray in the old church. They will gather police. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to look for one church. No English church. They just, oh, I said to them, I said, please, can I use this place to pray? They said, yes. I was there crying out to the Lord, praying. Six years old. Crying, Ada, Ada, because I didn't know. Do I see that thing just locked as I entered the God? Ada, I was crying, praying, praying until the body lifted. But as the body lifted, I felt that help. So I came out. As I walked, I don't think I've walked five minutes. Let's say from here to your the top junction. My phone rang. This was the place now. I was not doing uh, a factory job where they make CDs. Okay, they were the ones not paying me at that time. So they just rang me. I said, hey, a bride. Yeah, yeah. We just wanted you to know that we don't need you anymore. I'm coming from the prayer. <laughs> Less than five minutes. <laughs> I said, answer me. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need you anymore. I started laughing. <laughs> Where I stood, eh, I was laughing. And I said, Sister, is there anything more you can do? You've done everything. <laughs> I laughed. But you know why I could laugh? Because I had prayed. The body had done. That's why I tell you, prayer, you see, some of the things we say is part of things we have experienced too. If you've been in God for a while, you preach the Bible, but also by your experience comes into it. We speak the word of God. It's superior to any experience. But sometimes some things you've gone through validates the word. So when I say sometimes your prayer, it doesn't mean that God is here. It's because I know God. I know what he's done. I know. Lost the job as I was finishing praying. Then I came. So I went on Monday to see her. She was like, ah, daughter, you've not paid. You're in this school. So why she was like, I said, don't worry, I will pay. I had plans, but it didn't work. People who promised me, they did it. Because for them, as as we go in land, you are sorted. And it was good. Because now, I owe no man nothing. If I give you anything, it's because of my free will. Nobody will say, we sent you. No, you didn't send me. God sent me. And when I got there, after she granted and everything, she now said, but how did you get registered? I said, I'm not registered. She said, no. Every system in this school says you are registered. I said, no, I'm not registered. I said, because when I wonder, they said until I pay one five. She said, no. How did you get registered? I said, I'm not registered. She said, you are registered. Every system. She said, do you have your, whether it was green or yellow form? I still keep that form till today. Because that was the form that when you are registered, you submit. You feel you submit to them for them to process your, doc, your, your registration. So I had it with me because they didn't do my own. So she said, do you have, I said, I have it, it's in my bag here. She said, let me see, I brought it, she saw it, she looked at it, she looked at it. Then how did you get me? I said, I don't know. And she was like, okay. Then I was not happy, because I said I was registered, because I had gone to welfare. And welfare said, they cannot help me, because I know it's registered. So I said to her, I said, can I go to welfare now? <laughs> she got angry, and she was like, you have not paid anything. You're talking about welfare. I don't know if welfare will help you. But I didn't know God was moving. I didn't know God was at work there. Registration was done. Middle of the course before by July. This is God's fault. They decided September. I went in October. July I was able to pay one five. I went to meet her. I said, I need to enter library because I've not entered library since I came. You need a library card and it's your registration card. I just do my assignment. 
use a friend's uh, this thing to submit. Life continues. You will not know if you see me. Don't put it on your face. Don't sing to me. I knew some people who were there in the same church. Who had, in fact, one of them, when he heard later, he said, years later, why did you tell me that? I said, if I will you give me 7,000 pounds? He said, oh, I will pray for you. Don't worry. I've prayed the prayer. Don't worry. Man of God, by the time I finished, I needed to renew my visa. I had not paid. I get a proof of study. I went back to the same lady. I said, I have finished. I need to renew my visa. I need at least statement of results that I did this course. And she began to apologize. I'm sorry for what I did here. Some people have money, they don't pay. I didn't. So you were not about to me. I said, How many copies did I? I said, One. In my mind, that one, I will put a copy. <laughs> then she said, I will give you two. Keep one, you can send one. The same link. So when I tell you that God, when he's working, you don't know. Do you know I paid the fee three years after I finished? Two years later. I have my stories. So sometimes when people think, but now when I look back, I knew God was teaching me how to live by faith. Because when the city of God started, I had to learn. So when God takes you through things, don't think he's neglecting you or leaving you. He's training you for what is ahead of you that is bigger. Don't think God will ever disappoint. He will never disappoint. He's always on time. People of God, rise up on your feet and let's thank him. Let's thank him. Father, we honor you. If you know you received something, just lift your voice and appreciate it. Daramo go shian de hele brando rosia tokro de rishka hala brande hila pato rodia. I sense the unction of the Holy Ghost. I sense the power of God in the house. Conta hata mina go sapra de hila gos. Le crendo rosi zevra sapra de gedia tosa. I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters.
Lord and mothers, come and talk to him. Father, you are all that matters. Oh, you are all that matters. You are all that matters. I put you in front. surrendered your life to the Lord. doesn't matter how many years you've been in church. But today you want to say, Lord Jesus, I surrender everything to you. I want to pray with you and pray for you before we begin. signify by just lifting up your right hand wherever you are in the hall and let me join you in prayer you are saying consciously to the Lord Jesus today Lord I surrender thank you my brother thank you any other person you want to lift your hands before the Lord today it doesn't matter how long you've been in church but you are consciously saying Lord I surrender everything I'm giving you my life today I'm making you number one Making you number one in my life. Take your place in me. Take your place in me. Now, if your hands is lifted up, I'd like you to say this after me, Lord Jesus. Now, I also feel this. You might already be born again, but you are away from the Lord and you want to be restored. And your heart is telling you, I'd like you to join as well. Lift your hands to him. And I'll pray for you. Let every head be bowed and let every eyes closed. Just so we respect the Lord and everyone. Thank you, my sister. Now, just thank you. It doesn't matter who you are. You are before God. Even if you are on platform, please let your eyes be closed. And honor the Lord with the closed eyes. And uh, let those who want to do it, do it before the Lord. If your hands are lifted. I want you to just say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today with all my heart. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your spirit and give me the grace to serve you for the rest of my life. Satan, I end my relationship with you today. From today, I'm no more for you. You are no more in my life. I turn away from you, from the kingdom of darkness. I'm in the kingdom of light now. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these ones whose hands are lifted to you this morning. Lord, as you have called them by yourself, receive them. Lord, as you receive them, I ask that your grace will rest upon them. Power to serve you till the end, let it be released. Grace to walk before you, Lord, let it be released. Lord, let them know you personally. Reveal yourself to them by your spirit. Spirit of God, I ask that you will fill them to overflow in the name of Jesus. 
Now everyone lift your hands up as we begin to declare God's blessing. Le grosh kahalabande le pre de hila kosa bradikate. Livron do zo zebranta halagos kahala bradi hikato. Rindo so prende hila kura magaza. La to krende hila posa hanta li grados. Le greto rosi pahanda la kata. Librando rose ke te livra sopra ta. En toko te livra subrande hila ta. Lando krondi zazaza manila brantos. Librando roti akonde livre sopra ta. And the bread she brought Sido Kota Hala, Ratosa Tama, Lepanda Lakato, Elevante Le Parota, Elevante Le Catete, Le Brenda Ila Kuta, Le Brando Sote Keteke, and Tusa Banta La Grades, Le Conte Le Prados, and Teleponte Lake, Rico Ponte Pa, Ratosa Pata, and Telecata, Raka, Shada, Reca, Paria, Sate, Cate, Cate. Raka, Zata, Raka, Zata, Raka, Elebrantos, Elebrantos, Eblatula Kata. The blessing is released. The blessing is released. The blessing is released. The blessing is released. It's falling upon you. It's falling upon you. It's falling upon you. It's falling upon you. Receive it in the 